lighter movie talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Natasha Martinez, and this is the daily show where we give you all the latest news in the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us today is Dennis Zen. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Collider Movie Talk. Sorry we couldn't stream this live. We're having some difficulties with YouTube's live stream, kind of being a pain in the ass. So we're just going to get it to you uh, like how we do Heroes and Jedi Council. Right. Also joining us, John Schnepp. Hey, it's not live, everybody. It's not live. What's going on? <laughs> and also joining us, the lovely Clark Wolf. But are we live is my question. No, we're not no. live. Okay. Hello. <laughs> okay, it's Monday, which means it's time for the weekend box office report brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice made $52.4 million to take the number one spot at the weekend box office. That represents a huge drop of 68% from its $166 million debut and is on par with last year's Fantastic Four, which dropped 68.2% in its second weekend. It topped the foreign box office for a second consecutive weekend as well, racking up $85.1 million from 68 territories, pushing the global haul from $682.9 million and passing the global total for Man of Steel. Disney's Zootopia took number two with $20 million and is now at over $275 million domestic. My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2 took $11.1 million for the number three spot, with God's Not Dead 2 taking the fourth spot with $8.1 million, and Miracles from Heaven rounding out the top five with $7.5 million. Dennis, your thoughts on Batman v Superman's steep drop at the box office. So we predicted on Friday's show uh, what we thought the drop-off was going to be, and we also over said it was going to be over 50%. We didn't know it was going to be this high. Uh, that this is a big steep drop-off. I, you know, the movie's still making a ton of money, you know, especially overseas. I don't think it's going to cross that $1 billion mark, but we're kind of in that territory now. You can't blame the critics, right? Because the, the, the opening weekend, people thought maybe 200. They got like, what, 160 something. I, I'm sure a lot of the critic reviews and some of the that, that buzz kind of affected it. We're in that territory now where the critics aren't mattering. This is straight word of mouth from the fans. And so there are people who loved it, and that's great. But there's definitely other people who are not critics that didn't like it and are giving it, you know, mixed reaction. What do you think, Schnapp? Well, yeah, I just think it's kind of indicative of, you know, like we all thought that was going to happen. It's going to drop off because, you know, the, the, the people who really wanted to see it, including all of us, saw it. And then now it's the rest of the rest of the world. And they're kind of going by what people said, not just critics, but people are coming out of the theater and not just fans. Sort of a lot of people are like, that's ah, OK, you know. So that's kind of what you get. Like the second weekend, people are like, oh, maybe I'll see it, maybe I won't. So it's not a giant like rush to the box office. Clark? Yeah, and I think also one of the things that you can sort of look at is the fact that it's already surpassed Man of Steel It is really a testament to Batman's power at the box mm -hmm. office. Um, you know, I think going forward, it will be really interesting to see what type of numbers maybe a solo Batman movie pulls in, especially if Ben Affleck is involved since he was getting um, so much positive buzz for his performance um, or one of the most positive things but yeah I think I think you know we saw a big drop between Friday and Sunday of last weekend I don't think that was a good sign for this past weekend and uh, and now we it looks like we were proven true well so. it'll probably have staying power like next next weekend it'll probably be, it won't drop off as like no, the Fantastic no, no. Four mm -hmm. dropped off last year like Fantastic Four had like you know, if you're going by critics ratings, had like a super low rating. This is like, you know, still a low rating, but I think there's still the, the interest to see it and other fans are going to see it again. So it'll 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 stick around for a lot longer. And, and I was know. even reading that, you know, the um, the the amount the people who loved the movie are seeing it over and mm -hmm. over and over again. I mean, this is something that they really enjoyed and their repeat box office is, I think, going to help it stick um, and and not be a Fantastic Four kind of no, disaster. it's definitely not like that. Um, do you guys think this will affect WB's decision making right now, or are they going to stay the course? Because you know we have we have Zack Snyder doing Justice League still uh, in we a week. Yeah. You start shooting yeah. in a yeah. week. We so. have Suicide Squad coming out. We uh. heard about those reshoots, but I don't think I don't know how much of that has to do with with Batman v Superman. But do you think WB is hesitant? Because last weekend they're probably like, "Oh man, despite all the critics, you know, we still made a ton of money." And then this after this weekend, they're probably like, uh, "A little, a little more nervous." Well, you know, WB is, has had the you know the history of being very skittish and very hesitant about pulling any kind of triggers. So that when they announced this slate of five movies, a lot of us were like, "We'll see mm -hmm. if they stick to it," because they never do. 
And I think it's, it, you know, it's kind of a smart move to not stick to it. I would have announce a Ben Affleck solo The Batman movie as soon as possible. Yeah. I would like tomorrow. Yeah. I don't even know why they didn't announce it <laughs> and yesterday. And they're like, it's coming out nah, at it's the a, end of this year. Yeah, no, it should just announce it, get it on the slate, get it on the table next year, get it shooting. Like, shoot it at the same time as Just League. I don't know what, just do something, just get that movie made. Because that's what a lot of us came away with. Like, wow, Ben Affleck was really good as the Batman, not the insane murdering Batman, maybe of this older <laughs> version. Maybe do a prequel before he lost his, uh, you know, his mind. And, <laughs> Who's just regu- like the Batman that we all know. So I don't know. He was the best Batman that I think that we've had since Michael Keaton. So I'd like to see him play that character again, but just maybe not with that script around him. So and the Suicide Squad is it doesn't come out until August. So right. that's a long time for them to wait to see how that is received. So I, I don't know how they're going to proceed. From well, hopefully here. Warner Brothers isn't going to turn Suicide Squad into Batman and Robin, you know, like their <laughs> knee jerk reaction to like, well, let's add humor because people were complaining that the movie's too dour. It's like, I don't know what they're doing, you know, and I don't know if this is part of the plan if they always had this part of the plan, but it's a very knee-jerk reaction. So I think they're going to stay the course. But I'll tell you what I am excited for is, uh, I, and I hope it's one of the movies that actually gets made because they're still, like you were saying, Schnepp, you know, they announce these things. And I was like, I don't know if this is going to happen. But I'm still excited for James Wan's Aquaman. Mm. I think oh, that yeah. that is the most intriguing of all of these, mostly because I, we haven't seen it on the big screen yet at all. And, you know, I think James Wan, I, I've been a fan of his for a long time, but I think that he has a great sensibility mm-hmm. that he could really you know even even when his movies are, are dark and scary and serious um they're fun and right. they're funny and they're charming in a way darkly charming i guess you could say um, and him coupled with someone like momoa who is one of the most charming men i mean i've met him in person and he's lovely and cool and funny and so that's what's exciting to me like i want to see more of that i'm kind of don't want to see justice league right now right i'm in that same camp i'm like wonder woman aquaman announce that batman mo- movie already yep. stop playing around those are the three movies that I'm really excited about. No, I think I'm in the minority at the table here where I had mixed feelings about Batman v Superman, but I'm still excited to see Justice League, even with Zack Snyder directing it. Um, obviously, the, the funny thing is out of Batman v Superman, you have people super excited for Wonder Woman, for Aquaman, right. for ma- a solo Batman movie. So it's still generating interest. So I I, I think WB doesn't have Dennis, to be as may- word. maybe Justice League, like Aquaman and Wonder Woman's moms have got the same <laughs> first name. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, oh, man. <laughs> well, but it's generating interest for, for new, which I think is really interesting to me. Like the idea that audiences are not going, yeah, I want to see more Superman or, oh, I want to see. They are like, no, show us the new thing. Like, let's, let's kind of... Mm, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but it's like what, you know, we've seen what uh, Zack Snyder's vision for this universe looks like in two films so far. Yeah, right. L- let's see someone else's vision for this universe. Let's see Patty Jenkins, you know, vision. Let's see James Wan's vision. That's, that's, right. if I were Warner Brothers, I would sort of be kind of nurturing those projects yeah. maybe a little bit more. Let's see Ben Affleck's vision totally. of the Batman. What's up? Yeah, yeah. but in his defense, though, P- Batman within Batman v Superman was very well received, and so was Wonder Woman. Both of these characters were well received in that movie, Mm -hmm. and people are looking forward to that versus uh, maybe Justice League. Right. I would argue it was the characters, though, that were intriguing, and less so (coughs) the world that they live in. Yeah, that that could be argued, (laughs) but also, you know, the action itself and and seeing them, you know, fighting. Um, Also, you know, we had the other movies, Utopia. you know, second place. We, you know, that thing is a juggernaut. Yeah. I think it crossed like seven hundred or eight hundred million. Right. Recently, um, my big fat Greek wedding too. I, I have to say, I predicted uh, all five uh, this past week. Nice. Damn, Good son. job. Yes. Good job. The brand new Oracle, Denizen. Yeah. All right. What's next? <laughs> After a tweet from director Scott Derrickson announced filming for Marvel's Doctor Strange had wrapped principal photography, a number of images from the last few days from the set in New York hit the web, including shots of Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Stephen Strange and Mads Mikkelsen's villain role, whose part is still unknown to the fans at this time. Though we know Mikkelsen is playing an evil sorcerer, Marvel has yet to confirm exactly what the character's name is at this point. The psychedelic entry into Marvel's universe is directed by Scott Derrickson from a script by Prometheus Wright 
writer John Spites. The movie stars Cumberbatch, Mickelson, and Rachel McAdams as a fellow surgeon that has a history with Strange, Chibotel Ejiofor as Baron Mordo, Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One, and Benedict Wong as Strange's trusted associate, Wong. The movie comes to theaters this November 4th. Schnepp, what do you think of the set photos from the Doctor Strange set? Oh, very exciting. It's really fun to see like these these characters running around in the streets of New York. <laughs> and it's like outfits actually look kind of cool. It's very they very like much look like like the comic book, but translated into the real world. It's fun to see, you know, uh, Doctor Strange and more do like kind of like, I guess, pals in this version of the film, because, you know, eventually in the comic books, they become enemies. So I guess we're going to see some kind of uh, origin story. Uh, unfold. We don't know who Mads Mikkelsen is playing yet. My guess is he's Nightmare. I, I don't think they would pull out a Dormammu right now. So Dormammu is like a, one of these guys with a flaming head from another dimension. So, you know, my guess is it could be uh, Nightmare. That's my guess. I don't know much about Doctor Strange, so I, I won't guess on who the villain is. But for me, like seeing the set photos, set photos are always tough because everything looks so silly when people right. are doing it. I don't know if you guys saw the gif of Oh, of, so of, great of uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and and, and him and Mordu j- jumping like in nothing and just like <laughs> on the street it and then the other people silly. jumping behind him it's like West Side Story like they doing a musical Doctor Strange what's happening you know yeah so that stuff looks silly. Uh, it kind of is a little spoilery in the sense for me at least personally because I don't know much about Doctor Strange. Uh, like the Batman v Superman, the second trailer, where it's like, oh, I didn't know they were going to team up together, but mm-hmm. they're obviously in these pictures, they're running together, so they're not enemies. So right. that kind of a little spoiled for me, Clark. Yeah, I think they, I agree with you, Dennis. You know, it's always hard when you're having something fantastical completely out of context. <laughs> like they're standing there holding Starbucks, and you're like, that's, that's weird. Right. <laughs> but, um, but I think the pictures look great. And honestly, this cast is so great. I love everyone in this cast, and I cannot wait to see them living in this universe. And acting in this universe so i'm excited yeah cumberbatch actually visited a, a comic book store mm-hmm. was like like photographed holding up a couple of doctor stranges so, awesome. so it's pretty it's cool to see like these characters these actors interacting in the real world yeah who knows what they're going to be it seems like could this be the end or the middle of the movie we don't know uh you know maz mickelson and all those guys have like weird burnt out crispy mm-hmm. purple eyes and you know it's definitely going to be freaky psychedelic some people are saying are those the mindless ones who knows who they are you know but i guess we'll find out in a year and, and then Plus y- a year. you said you mm-hmm. think it's it's this character nightmare is is does he visually look like that or at he do- all or no not? He, no he doesn't so that's kind of like it's still a hard guess for me like there's a couple other characters that he could be, but you know I'm just gonna say Nightmare for right now. Okay. Hmm. All right, guys. Now on to buy or sell. Natasha, what do we got? 20th Century Fox dropped a new TV spot for Independence Day Resurgence, which offers a look at the return of Brent Spiner's character. He originated in the 1996 blockbuster. Though the new movie did away with Will Smith's character, the rest of the cast returns in the next epic chapter that sees the survivors from the original movie recovering alien technology and collaborating on an immense defense program to protect the Earth from another invasion. The movie stars Liam Hemsworth, Jeff Goldblum, Bill Pullman, Judd Hirsch, Vivica A. Fox, Brent Spiner, Micah Monroe, and Sayla Ward. The movie drops in theaters on June 24th. Clark, buy or sell the new TV spot for Independence Day Resurgence. Oh, I buy it. I buy it all day long for a million bucks. I <laughs> love Independence Day so much. And while I was very disappointed when I first heard that Will Smith was being lame and did not come back, uh, you know, I've loved all of these trailers so far. And I think that one of the things I like about the trailers is that they hark back to the film that fans know and love and yet they don't seem overly nostalgic to me um, at least that's how I feel about it I love seeing like in the new spot we see Dr. Oaken I, I think I'm saying his name right but from the movie Dr. Oaken and he's the one who's like the really sweet guy so anyway and he's got the long funny hair yeah. so okay so I'm very excited about this and um, and I think that all the I like how the comedy is playing Jeff Goldblum looks great and uh, and it looks like from the little that we've seen he and Liam have a little bit of a funny chemistry which you know I like Liam has Hemsworth as a guy. I haven't loved a lot of his performances yet, so maybe this will be the one that sort of makes him the movie, the second Hemsworth movie star. I don't know, <laughs> but um, but I'm I'm super excited, and uh, you know, I I can't wait. So I buy it. I'm buying it as well. I, I 
Roland Emmerich to me as a director, he, I think he's like a guilty pleasure of mine. Like the maybe the some way I don't enjoy Michael Bay's work, but maybe that's how uh, you know maybe people enjoy the way I enjoy Roland Emmerich's. Um, I I think the difference though is he has a little more fun in his movies. They're like they're more silly. Independence Day is a good example of that. Um, and I, I like this little spot. I like seeing Bill Pullman's back. And then I don't think that one scene in, in that spot is him dying. Yeah, you know? that's what I was worried right. about. They wouldn't show that in I a TV spot. Not. It looks like he was dying, though. Oh. No, because he, he's got to come back for it. You know they're going to make another sequel after this. So he's he's got to come back for this one. Schnepp. I totally sell this. <laughs> Independence Day regurgence. Boo. <laughs> Tired of this. Go make another 2012. What was that dumb one with the whole? Yeah, 2012. Like, yeah, yeah. Was it called 2012? Or the, or the day, day after, after tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you know what? I liked Independence Day 20 years ago. You don't want to see Jeff Goldblum hook up his MacBook Pro? No, I don't want to see. To, uh, it's to, too uh, bad to the aliens alien tech- waited this long to come back. I'm, uh, yeah, so, uh, like, so for some reason, they have a USB 3 port. Yeah, there. I, I hope they really have. Yeah, I hope the aliens have, are bringing their new Mac technology, you know? It's like maybe they hooked up with jobs in the future somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, I can't buy this. All right. I will say this actually comes out on my birthday. I, oh, I, what? I, I don't know. Birthday I, screening. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know. Maybe I'll watch it in the afternoon and then party at night. Come on, man! It's a, a it's a nighttime show. You yeah, know? It's no, be that's, awesome. that's can't do it. Birthday no, they need to move it because it can't compete with your birthday. I know, obviously, exactly, right? Exactly. <laughs> All right, what's next? Last September, a Sicario sequel was announced by Lionsgate with writer Taylor Sheridan and producers Molly Smith and Trent and Thad Luckenbill returning to produce, though no more news was released at this time. Now, in a recent interview with the Hollywood Reporter, producer Trent Luckenbill revealed a new draft of the script was turned in with the whole cast of the movie represented in the story with original director Dennis Villanueva involved in the development process. He said, It's a great big world. We can't reveal the plot, but you'll see Emily Blunt, Benicio Del Toro, and Josh Brolin all come back. Obviously, we would love it if Dennis could direct. He's a busy man, but he's certainly part of the process with us right now. Dennis, buy or sell a Sicario sequel. I'm conflicted on this one. Uh, I'm probably going to have to sell it, even though I thought Sicario was fantastic. It was in my top 10 movies of last year. I just don't see the purpose of a sequel for this series. They talked briefly about maybe doing a prequel or a spinoff with, with Benicio Del Toro's Hitman character, and I, I was interested in that. But why are they bringing back all these characters? Where it ends, especially for Emily Blunt's character, is the ending that that character needs because I, I feel like her character is a reflection of uh, of us. Why would they come bring her back? Is she supposed to be redeemed in some way? I just I just don't get it. And then if uh, Denis Villeneuve is not coming back, if him and Roger Deakins aren't coming back, I'm uh, far less interested. Schnepp? Yeah, I'm selling it too. I loved the first Sicario film. And to me, there is only one Sicario film. It's a one and done film. It doesn't need a sequel. It's it, it just it's a money grab, unfortunately, because I think they were like, hey, we've got these amazing characters. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's what's great about books or one one shot movies where it, it's a great film. It's a standalone film. It doesn't need a sequel. And to me, it, it feels like it could almost possibly taint the original when you have a bad sequel come out. So I'm selling it. Yeah, what do you title a sequel to this anyway? Like Sicario 2, <laughs> like, you know, back in the game or what? Yeah. I mean, like, it's just, what is this? I, I sell it too, and um, I feel similarly to the way both of you do. I saw the first one, I liked it a lot, but it felt like a closed story. Um, and I don't see why we need more. It kind of, I don't I don't know if this is maybe a false equivalency, but it makes me think of like, why we didn't get a traffic to. Yeah. Right. Like, do you know no, what I mean? True. Like, it's done, it's over. So can we please, I mean, maybe the idea of having these three incredible actors team up again was just too intriguing but can't they just do another movie together i don't know but yeah i sell it i I don't feel like we need this at all and as far as a money grab it's odd it's not like this movie made a ton of money so i just don't see where like they're like oh we have to make another one unless it maybe we don't know but unless it did you know exceedingly well in vod and i mean i know that's where my mom and i watched it but you know and it couldn't have cost that much to make so maybe but i have i don't know all right all right what's next 
The Hollywood Reporter reports that a remake of the 1984 John Carpenter sci-fi classic Starman is getting a modern remake with Real Steel and Night of the Museum director Sean Levy taking the helm. Starman, the original that starred Jeff Bridges and Karen Allen, is about an extraterrestrial that inhabits the body of a deceased man who kidnaps his widow in the hopes of rendezvousing with his ship from his home planet. The Columbia Pictures movie will be set in the 21st century with a new script from Arash Amel. Michael Douglas, who produced the original film, will also produce the remake alongside director Levy. Schnepp, buy or sell a Starman remake with Sean Levy at the helm. Surprisingly, I'm going to buy this because, you know, originally when I first heard it, I was like, I sell it. Don't touch John Carpenter's original. And then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? When it came out, it was a really fun film. Not a lot of people saw it. It was a medium sized hit. Uh, it's a beautiful story, and I think done the right way, it could be a really cool retelling and open it up for a brand new generation of people who never saw the original Starman. So I'm going to buy it. Clark? Yeah, I feel similarly. So actually, I've never seen this one. This is one of the Carpenter uh, movies from way back when that I haven't seen yet. But I know that it, there's such an affection around this movie. And But I also know, like you were saying, Schnepp, it wasn't this huge box office draw. It was more of a cult following or like, you know, this nostalgic thing that people love. And, and I'm actually not uh, inherently anti-remake myself. I think that there are a lot of movies that have great ideas. And if they're explored in the right way, they can really be done for the better um, and if anything I would hope that this would maybe reintroduce or introduce for the first time a whole generation of people to an older movie that they maybe never saw and maybe get a little bit more attention for the original or for some of Carpenter's earlier things because he is known mostly probably for Halloween maybe that but maybe they'll check out the thing maybe they'll check out his Elvis movie he did with Kurt Russell maybe you know Carpenter has this great body of work that I would love to see more people interested in so if remaking one of those first movies helps then i'm all for it yeah i haven't seen this since i was much younger so i don't remember <laughs> the quality of the film but i'm gonna have to sell it just based on i don't know if there's an audience for it. i mean the movie could be great mm -hmm. but i just don't know who's gonna go see it i mean even when when they redid the thing actually it wasn't a redo it was it was a, a prequel, prequel. <clears throat> like and that's right. uh more popular than Starman, and, and that didn't do so well i just don't know if if today's audience and the climate of today, like a movie like this can can do anything at the box office. It kind of depends on who they get to play the lead yep. alien and who they get to play the lead uh, woman actress. Yeah. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, they had Karen Allen and uh, Jeff Bridges. And who are they going to get now? If they get a really amazing uh, duo that has great chemistry, that could be it. It could be like the notebook, but for aliens. And <laughs> it could be a. That, a that's the tagline. Right. <laughs> the notebook with aliens. Yeah. It could also be a really good, maybe a signal just looking at how much could this movie cost? Like, I know Levy has, you know, a, a big track record with the Night at the Museum movies, but, you know, maybe this is a sign that we're going to get a $35 million movie or a $50 million sci fi movie, and that's good. We yeah. want more of those. Definitely. So, you know, fingers crossed. All right. All right. What's next? The Hollywood Reporter reports that Paramount Pictures has picked up the movie rights to Dream Jumper, a graphic novel co-written by Greg Grunberg and award-winning cartoonist Lucas Turnblum, with Grunberg's best friend J.J. Abrams stepping in to produce. Sources on the project say that movie adaptation may be live action or animated, though at this time no decision has been made. Abrams will produce through his Bad Robot production company, though no writer has been attached as of this time. Dream Jumper is about a boy named Ben who can jump into other people's dreams in order to help them defeat their nightmares. No release date has been scheduled. Clark, buy or sell a Dream Jumper movie with J.J. Abrams producing? Sure, I buy it. Why not? It sounds very on... It sounds so awful, but it sounds on brand for J.J. Abrams. It's kind of right up his alley. He seems to be the guy with the Midas touch when it comes to producing and creating franchises or relaunching franchises. And it sounds like a sweet movie. Plus, I love the idea of getting into nightmares, and especially with kids. I'm assuming that this is going to be a movie aimed at children or maybe early preteens. Right. So, you know, that sounds great. And I can't wait to see these creatures. So I'll buy, or I'm, I give it a thumbs up. I forget I'll what we're doing yeah. We're by ourselves. We're by ourselves. Um, it. I give it five shots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> glug, glug, glug. I'll buy it as long as he doesn't attach the Cloverfield name to it. Oh, come so, on. Yeah. Cloverfield jumper. He's, yes. he's going to yes. slap Cloverfield on everything. I'll, I'll buy it. I, I like the idea. I like how uh, Greg Grunberg got this idea. It was from his son. His son had 
you know, had mentioned like, oh, I had a dream that I went into my friend's nightmares and helped them fight, fight off so and so. So I think it's a, that's a nice, cute story. It is definitely aimed at kids. If you look at the artwork for the graphic novel, it just looks like that. Um, I don't know if JJ will actually direct it though. It just seems not, I don't know, a little more kiddish than what he's used to doing. So he, he's helping out his buddy producing it, and it, it, it wouldn't have gotten made, I don't think, without his help. Uh, Schnepp? I buy it. I mean, I love the idea. I think it's a great idea that that it came from his son. I don't. I, I didn't. I didn't remember here reading that, but I love the idea of like a kid being able to jump into one of his friend's dreams to help, you know, fight monsters or whatever. You know, you don't want to call it Nightmare Jumper. That might be too rough. <laughs> so Dream Jumper is a great title, and it's cool that JJ's like saw that and saw the potential in that. It was, hey, I think I could turn that into a cool movie. So I buy it. I suggest for a director on this one because it just hit me, Gil Keenan, who did Monster oh, yeah. House and did the Poltergeist remake, which I, you know, Poltergeist remake, not the best thing in the world, but the stuff with the kid, the stuff with the nightmares, you know, he's proven that he can handle this type of stuff in animation and Definitely. in live action. Like that. that would be incredible. Plus, you know, Monster House kind of had, well, it had Steven Spielberg involved. Didn't he produce it, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, I don't know. He produces a lot of stuff. Well, that's true. So <laughs> I know I'm making like a weird connection here, but, you know, I can absolutely see someone with J.J. Abrams' sensibilities working alongside someone someone with Gil Keenan's sensibilities and making something really cool. So yeah. Hollywood, Gil Keenan, let's have him do this, please. Thank you. Okay, what's next? On Friday, Lionsgate released the official synopsis to John Wick Chapter 2. The movie will see Keanu Reeves' retired hitman back in service one more time. The movie will also star John Leguizamo, Leguizamo Bridget Moynihan, Ian McShane, and Lawrence Fishburne. The synopsis reads, Keanu Reeves returns in the sequel to the 2014 hit as legendary hitman John Wick, who is forced to back out of retirement by a former associate plotting to seize control of a shadowy international assassin's guild. Bound by blood oath to help him, John travels to Rome, where he squares off against some of the world's deadliest killers. Lionsgate's John Wick Chapter 2 arrives in theaters on February 10th, 2017. Dennis Byers saw the new synopsis to John Wick Chapter 2. I'm going to buy it. I don't know if, you know, saving the world is as big a motivation as get killing the or killing the people who kill killed your puppy that your dead wife left you <laughs> right but uh i like I, I like john wick a lot it was very entertaining i like that they're going somewhere else to europe i want to see this continental hotel over there see how it's maybe similar or different i wonder if going to rome is maybe a nod to uh bruce lee's return of the dragon where where he went over there and fought chuck norris in that coliseum will we get a cool coliseum scene I don't know, but I, I'm all for it. Schnapp. That's right, tearing that hair from Chuck Norris's yeah. <laughs> hairy chest. Remember that? Yep. Bruce Lee fans. It's, ah! <laughs> I don't know if we're going to see that in John Wick 2, Chapter 2, but I'm excited to see this film. Um, I, what does he owe a life debt? Like, what does he say? Blood a oath or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's a blood <laughs> oath. That's what I immediately thought. is like, uh, it's some kind of Wookiee thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, Keanu Reeves did a great job as John Wick. I loved that film. I loved how murderous it was and, and exciting to enter this horrible world of assassins. I'm sure they're going to, I think they're bringing back the dude with a weird little laser eye thing. Like the guy that he was like kind of fighting in the middle. I can't remember what that guy's name was, but yeah, I buy this. Like, go, let's go to Rome. I, I buy it too and and similar to um dr strange the cast is awesome like love this cast mm -hmm. i think that's great and it's it's taking over deadpool's uh slot so clearly they they are up to something there so hopefully that's a good sign for what we'll be in for so i buy it all right guys now before we get on a mailbag i remind you that uh we have live twitter questions which you can tweet us even though we're not doing this live <laughs> but we're gonna pick out twitter questions anyways because i'm sure there's a bunch in there so let's get on a mailbag you can mailbag uh send emails to us at uh, collidervideo at gmail.com what do we got up first Okay, John Hernandez writes, Hey, Movie Talk. Love Movie Talk. Been a fan since the AMC days. My question comes from all this talk about BVS. Why does everybody always want to compare the DC movie universe with the Marvel movie universe when Fox and the X-Men did it first and best, while not counting The Last Stand? X-Men started as a team movie and finally doing standalones, which, according to Deadpool, are successful. So why compare Marvel and not Fox with X-Men? I think it's different, though, because X-Men is the, the biggest known property, I mean, alongside Wolverine, and they made those movies, and, and the other movies were more like spin-offs. They weren't totally connected to the, the main X-Men movies, where, where what Marvel did was it was building a universe with the standalone films and then converging with Avengers, which is actually less known, I mean, 
before the movie came out, right. obviously, than the standalone <coughs> characters themselves. I mean, if you had asked the average person before, oh, uh, Avengers, they'd be like, oh, that movie with Sean Connery, you know, right. like that's that's what they would have thought. So, yeah, I just I just don't think it's the same. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not the same. Also, Blade came out before X-Men and that was actually dimension film. So that, that's not the biggest film that was made. And you got to remember, it's Marvel versus DC because it's DC owned by Warner Brothers. That's their entire pantheon of characters. Now it's versus Disney Marvel, which is their entire pantheon of characters, except for the few characters that were sold to other studios. Yeah. Like Spider-Man is owned by Sony, X-Men and Fantastic Four is owned by Fox. That's it. Every other Marvel character is owned by Marvel and Disney, which now owns Marvel. So that's why when you hear people say, oh, it's Marvel versus DC, or it's like Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman, all these other characters versus like Captain America and like Iron Man and Hulk and all those other characters, it's because those are the two studios. The X-Men franchise is just happens to be because Fox owns those rights and they were able to successfully do something. Un like if you look at Fox also owns Fantastic Four and they've been unsuccessful in getting to make those films, even though those the the, the two that came out like in the early 2000s weren't like flops. Mm -hmm. They just weren't like critical or fan hits. So, yeah. And I think the comparison also comes <clears throat> because of just the game plan. Like you have these individual films from DC, you have these individual films from Marvel and allegedly all leading up to these team ups. So I think that com comparison is natural. Whereas like you guys said, you know, with the uh, with X-Men, you start with the team up essentially, right. and then you break off into the individual roles. So, um, you know, it, I can see where it's an easier comparison to make, but at the same time, it's not because Marvel took however many years rolling out those individual films all leading up to the team up. So it's it's actually really like apples and oranges, if you mm -hmm. ask me. It's not yeah, it was separate movies that led into each other where X-Men it was three three movies in a row that were just sequels to each other right. and mm -hmm. then they decided to spin off movies. All right, what's next? George Mundacall writes, hey, guess my name is George, huge fan of Collider. TV talk, movie talk, mailbag, Jedi cancel, and pretty much everything else about the channel. Just curious, what do you guys think are some of the best movie franchises to marathon either as a rewatch or for a first time viewer? For me, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, MCU movies, Mission Impossible, Born, anything else? I mean, definitely the original Star Wars trilogy. I, you know, my, I personally wouldn't throw the prequels into a marathon there. And I wouldn't even throw Force Awakens in there. Just the original trilogy, those sure. three. Um, Lord of the Rings for me, the extended editions. That's a long time. That's like 10 <laughs> hours of just sitting there. Right. I've done it before. Uh, you got to have, you know, your binge game has to be pr pr pretty big on that one. Yeah. Um, I would say like 80s, like I throw in like Blade Runner or mm -hmm. Tron, throw in a Krull, Battle Beyond the Stars, Conan the Barbarian, stuff like that. Those are good. I, I'm a big fan of the um, 28 uh, days, weeks. Um, see, I know there's only two. So Alex Garland stopped directing movies and please make 28 weeks. Please write a 28 weeks later uh, or months later. But I love those movies and I think they work really, really well back to back because mm -hmm. they are so different and yet they complement that universe so much. And honestly, I just rewatched Ghostbusters 1 and 2 back to back and I have a soft spot for Ghostbusters 2. And so it was really fun rewatching those. So that was those are my I would also say like I, we, me and Holly do every Christmas we do uh, like a Bad Santa and Rare Exports. Those two <laughs> movies together make an incredible double movie, uh, double feature. So I would do Godfather one and two and skip three. Uh, some people do Harry Potter, Toy Story. You could do the Dark Knight trilogy, mm -hmm. but Chris Nolan. Personally, I don't marathon the MCU movies because they are, even though they're part of the same universe, it's it's like more like little like little connections here yeah, and they're there so different yeah you jumping from like iron man to thor to, to to winter soldier all that stuff it's just it's not exactly one storyline that goes all the way through that's why i like lord of the rings where it's just like it's the same story that goes from beginning to end is there anything that you like to marathon natasha well you named both of mine so lord of the rings and definitely harry potter for okay. sure I, if i if it, for me harry potter i'd skip the first two movies <laughs> those, those kind of put me to sleep all right Aww. uh now on to your twitter questions uh natasha what do we got Okay, Mason asks, will Fandango buying Flickster and Rotten Tomatoes affect its rating system? If I'm not mistaken, Fandango is owned by Universal and Warner Brothers. 
I don't know. I mean, well, I think Batman I v Superman, uh, the second one, will have an 88% Rotten Tomatoes, right? Because I have no <laughs> idea. No, I don't think it'll affect it. I mean, you know, they're buying it because those are, are popular sites that are generating uh, views and people are going to those sites. That's why those sites get bought. I don't think they're buying it so that they can be like, now let's destroy it, you know? No, and also it's kind of a no-brainer if you're going to search for a review of a movie and you go, oh, great, I want to see this. Oh, look at this. I could just click right here and buy my ticket because yeah. this is owned by Fandango. I mean, it's kind of, yeah, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, and any changes would come more in the long term. Anytime people buy com or other companies buy other companies, they don't, it's not like they go in there and just like wreck up shop because they buy them for a reason. They want to take advantage of what they're doing well and then maybe either assimilate them into what they're doing or kind of change things up but it usually takes a longer process than so next week there's not going to be like giant like only universal movies right. on fandango all right what's next okay jonathan patrick Orr asks is the rumor true that cyborg will show up in the flash film uh i think there was an interview with deborah snyder uh in forbes mm -hmm. where she kind of hinted but it could have been taken in the way of maybe she was just talking about justice league but mm -hmm. she was saying how those two are younger and they they'd have some more similarities and they could you know maybe do a buddy thing but i don't think she necessarily said that was the flash movie but some people were taking it that way i would buy that i would i would hope that they do that because mm -hmm. you know the more interaction that all these characters have in their other their you know separate movies the better i think and you know definitely bringing in cyborg earlier since we you know kind of see his kind of whatever his origin might be and if that's linked to the new gods maybe that's linked to the way the flash like kind of crosses between dimensions we'll see i'd like to see that be like i don't know about a buddy cop style mm -hmm. film but it would be cool if they were in the same movie Clark? yeah yeah i would like to, an introduction to cyborg a little earlier just because out of all the things that i saw in batman v superman like the teases his was the story that i was less familiar with and while we i guess saw a hint at his origin um you know i think that he's gonna take a little bit more introduction for a general mass audience so the sooner the better mm -hmm. didn't help that that was the weakest of all the introductions yeah in the i mean movie. i agree i yeah. agree yeah. <laughs> okay do you have another one yeah jonathan peck asks with jungle book getting a hundred percent on rotten tomatoes how much money can the jungle book open on its opening weekend uh i don't know but that hundred percent is not going to stay it, it, it's just those things there's always someone that comes along that has to poo poo a movie you know there's a it used to be that armand white guy but they they took him off of rotten tomatoes now because he used to be like every pixar movie would be like 99 percent because he was the one guy who didn't like it. And he just like, I don't know, the reasons that he would come up with were, were, were ludicrous. And there will be someone like that for Jungle Book. I don't know. Um, I don't know how this is going to play. I'm really looking forward to it. I think we're ha there's a press screening, not this week, but next week. And, and uh, if I had to guess, I don't know, I don't know, $60 million? I don't know. What about you guys? Oh, how much is it going to make opening weekend? Yeah. Wow. I think it's going to make over over 100. Really? Yeah, because it's I mean, everyone's looking forward to it. I mean, that's I mean, everyone I've talked to cannot wait to see that film. And I think it's going to cross the board. Families are going to go. Uh, big nerds like myself are going to go. So it's like one of those films that, you know, we grew up with it, like watching Mowgli and all these characters. You know, I don't know if like they're going to sing mm -hmm. or not. I certainly hope there's at least one song in there. Christopher Walken, <laughs> yeah, what's up? King so, Louie, I, know, I need right? him to I'm sing. I'm the king of the jungle here. Yeah. So you know what I mean? I, I think it's going to be a, a big hit and that so many critics are enjoying it mm -hmm. just goes to show you like, wow, it's like, I didn't think it would make 100%. I haven't even been following Rotten Tomatoes. I didn't hear that it was like 100% scored. I didn't know they were doing the screenings yet. So Yeah, it's probably from more of a limited base, but I'm not going to go against you on your box office predictions like, on go, numbers. Go against me, son. No. I could be wrong. Yeah. Look, if I was wrong on Batman v Superman. No, Whoa. but that, 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 yeah, yeah, but that was uh, based on uh, I know. your it's emotion. Your too emotion. excited. Yeah. <laughs> Lower your expectations. Yeah, Clark. Uh, yeah I'm with Snap. I think it's going to go over $100 okay. million in its opening weekend. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Disney will be happy to, to see that. Well, yeah. Disney paid me to say that. Yeah. So, right. uh, you know, yeah. we're all paid on the shill of Disney, yeah, right? Totally. Yeah, totally. Hey. I got a Best Buy gift card. It's, it's weird because <laughs> weird everyone keeps saying that. I still haven't got my check yet. I know. Where's oh, our check? Where's, where's my check? Send that check over here. <laughs> I know. Uh, what's next? Okay, well, Jonathan Peck has another good question. Are you guys excited for the BFG? Steven Spielberg, Fantasy, Summer Blockbuster, and John Williams. I'm hyped Honestly, out of my mind. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. not either I'm, I'm just not i saw the trailer and it didn't do anything for mm -hmm. me why are you guys the, hating the, 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 pro, <laughs> the, the 
because uh, you know yeah. Disney pays me. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I'm more excited about Re- Ready Player One. That sounds more interesting, more up my alley. BFG, just the, the trailer and just the idea of it. Not interested. Well, I'm gonna go against these fools and say I'm totally excited <laughs> about it. No, I, I'm, I am. I'm excited about it. I, the trailer didn't wow me, but I love the idea of it. So. And I love the story too. I, I loved Road Doll when I was a kid. Totally. I loved the BFG when I was a kid. There's so much. There's so much really funny, dry, like goofy stuff in there, and I think it's a it's a great book. And and you know I think Steven Spielberg obviously is a great director. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I. I wonder because you know with with Road Doll it's tricky. They're they're mo- they're stories for children. However, they're not necessarily children's stories. There's so much adult material in all of Road Doll's work, and from what I saw in that first initial trailer, it looked a little heavy on the child on the childlike wonder. Mm-hmm. And and I wonder if they're going to keep any of that like kind of um, satirical kind of dark humor in there. I hope that they I are. Hope so. All right, let's do one more. Okay, Andrea asks, are you going to do a Winter Soldier commentary before the release of Civil War? Uh, we're going to try. We have the Force Awakens one that Schnepp, Campia, Harloff, and David Griffin did together, and that comes out tomorrow to go along with the release. We still have to do uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah, the reason we did it out of order, a lot of people were asking, why did you do it out of order? It's because The Force Awakens was being released, and we felt, hey, that'd be fun. A lot of people are getting that, so it'd be fun to have that commentary available. But we are going to do the for- uh, Return of the Jedi probably either end of this week or early next week. We're going to get that done. So but- Winter Soldier is something we're trying to do. And then there's so many. I yeah. mean, we want to do a ton. But the thing is, is it's not like you sit down and like, oh, we shoot a video, five minutes, ten minutes. It's like two, th- two and a half hours, yeah. you know. Setting up the cameras, getting ready. Did yeah. we all take piss breaks? You know how hard that is to just sit there and not take a piss break? Schnepp has to go into makeup yeah, and I know. that I gotta takes put, yeah, forever. Yeah, I got to get my hair did. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of work, yo. Yeah. Diva. All, right. All right, guys, that's it for today's show. I want to thank everyone joining us at the table. Schnepp, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram, lurking around, and you can support my Kickstarter, Sweaties Unite, Rise of the Uber Nerd, by going to Kickstarter. Pitch in. We're in our last two weeks. Let's get this movie made. Clark? You guys can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. No, Instagram, Twitter, <laughs> uh, Periscope, and yeah, at Clark Wolf, <laughs> Clark with an E, Wolf with an E, and on YouTube. Uh, I'm still doing Supergirl recaps for anybody who maybe was watching Supergirl or has started watching Supergirl. So you can find those at youtube.com slash official Clark Wolf. And Natasha, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Natasha Lexis underscore and on Facebook at Natasha Lexis Martinez. And you can find me tonight on TV Talk because I'll be guest panelist on there. And then you also can find me on Twitter at Think Hero or Instagram Dennis.TZNG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Collider Videos. And hopefully tomorrow we'll work out all these YouTube live streaming things. We'll mm-hmm. see you guys later. Earth 2. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.